Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com, where you can listen to all of our podcasts, Sign up for our mailing list. Do it now if you haven't because we will give you a free report. The five biggest mistakes men are making in bed and women are making in bed. Which I'm not saying you're making a ton of mistakes. I'm just saying you might want to spice up your sex life a little bit and make sure you're doing things A-OK. Also, we've got amazing blogs that will teach you everything you want to know about sex. And fun pictures to look at and videos. Just check it out. Hi, Menace. How you doing today? I'm good. How you doing, Emily? <laughs> I'm good. I just wanted to, I wanted to tell people, because people, you know, listen to our podcast. A lot of people go to iTunes and they download it and they're like, oh, like, I want them to see that our website is rocking out right now. Yeah. Every single day you update it, correct? Correct. And, um, and also Facebook, Twitter, Sex with Emily. We do a lot of fun stuff there. We are changing people's sex life every single day. Including menaces, but he won't tell me much about it. For real. No, okay, this don't show, put it on real. me. This what? is sex oh, whatever, with whatever. Emily. What's oh, going on Jesus. with your sex life? Jesus H. Don't throw that at me every single show. I had a blind date. I'll get into it. Wow. This show is brought to you by Crazy Girl. Crazy Girl products are amazing. CrazyGirlProducts.com. You can get everything at Crazy Girl that you need from shaving cream to orgasm gel. Because who doesn't need that? Everything you want to look good, feel good this summer. And I gave these hearts. I was on the Kris Jenner show. I gave her these crazy girl hearts. They turn into a warming massage pad. They look like regular cool hearts. You yeah. crack them, Menace, and they turn into a massage a massage pad. You can massage your partner. And she freaked out. She loved them so much. So I sent her a whole huge carton of them. So if anyone wants to check out crazygirlproducts.com, they're awesome. Use coupon code EMILY25 for 25% off. 
That's what's up. That's what I gotta say, <laughs> dude. Did you did you see me on Chris Jenner? Did you did you know? Did I you know. Well, you I didn't. saw your your photos and stuff. I didn't I didn't get to see the episode though. But I I don't get to watch a lot of TV these days, so don't feel bad. I don't feel bad at all. It's cool. It's online though on YouTube. Oh, but anyway, it's I was online? on the Chris Jenner I'll go show. Watch it. Oh, it's on YouTube, and I have a clip I can send you just of my segment. But it was it was so funny. I. So Kris Jenner, whatever, Kardashian mom, I went, she has a talk show. It was like a trial run for like two months. And I, Menace, Kanye West was there that day, but not on my show. But he was recording like down right next to me. What? I know, you would have had fun. And then the Jenner sisters were there the little, with the long legs. Yeah. What? They were, they were on my show. Damn it. What? I wanted you to come whatever uh-huh. so then I um it was cool so it was a fun show a fun segment I basically it was about the power of touch and it started out I was saying you know studies came out that show that couples who aren't touching and who aren't intimate to each other with each other you know they lose everything like they might be fighting about different things but really it's like the power of, touch is so important to connect with your partner on an intimate level and I talked about the power of massage so that was my segment power of touch power of massage I brought in um, a few products to demonstrate on Chris and her co-host, Carlos Ponte. Do you know who he is? Uh, no. Well, she changes Carl- up coasts every single episode. Right. Yeah. Some some Carlos. So anyway, mm. first I showed him a few, few from products, good vibrations. I showed her the little chocolate body pens. I drew on her. She tasted it. It's chocolate. Then I showed her the warming massage hearts from Crazy Girl. And then, Menace, the best part, so you people can check this out on my site, I launched my new product line is- I, on camera, and I gave everybody a candle in the audience. Oh, is it available and it was now? Very exciting. Could like people yes. pick it up? Yes. This is my okay. Oh, this man. is my first official. This is my first official show. I've been doing this for eight years, and I have a true product to, 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 that I want you to buy. Go to Emily and Tony T O N Y dot com, and we made we launched an intimate care line with the best ingredients. And a massage candle is one of them. And you know that I'm obsessed with massage candles. And they basically, it burns. You could give a little. So I was doing this on Kris Jenner. I'm like, give me your arm. And you pour, you let the wax pool, you pour it on your partner. And it's like a little sexy, kinky thing to do. And it turns into massage oil, not wax. And they smell amazing. Our candles are like the most delicious smelling things. So everyone in the audience got a candle from Emily and Tony. That is amazing. Hello. And all the info is at your website. It, do you have like yeah, a website? Yeah, I don't mean to go off. Yeah, emilyandtony.com. Sweet. I know. How long you been working on this actual product itself? Two because and a half I, years. Wow. Two, two, and, two and, half and a half years. So here's the deal. I don't want to be too like whatever about me right now. I know it's sex with Emily, but I just want to say that it was so cool because we did a big launch party in New York last week because all the editors are there, magazines and newspaper, all the media. And we did a big event and we were telling our story about how we met. And Anthony, Tony, he owns one of the biggest men's care line, skincare line on the planet. Number one seller at Sephora. It's called Anthony.com. Anthony's skincare for men. So Anthony is my friend from since I was eight years old when my parents bought his parents' house. And we became friends. And then we lost touch. We went to summer camp together. And then we lost touch. We had dinner in San Francisco two years ago. And I said, Tony, I think there needs to be a lubricant on every single goddamn nightstand in America. Because most lubricants are not good. They enhance your sex life. And I want to make a really good lubricant. So he's like, let's do it. And then we launched with three products. So it, that's our whole story. And they're amazing. And they, the lubricant is like the best lube. I, we tested for two and a half years and it's the best lube out there. Wow. And it enhances sex. Yep. That's all. You know, I'm excited. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy that you finally launched it because I know when did I see you in LA like months ago, you were just showing me just some demo photos of the product. And I, I can't Menace, believe that can it's actually you... out. I know. I'm going to send you samples of the products because the one that I didn't mention yet is the down under ball cream to powder for men so their balls don't sweat. <laughs> and I want you, will you try it? Like it makes you fresh yes. and dry all day long. It's like deodorant for your balls. If I send you a yeah. whole care package, will you use, okay, done. It's, uh, it's for SBS, sweaty ball syndrome. What's that? 
Sweaty ball syndrome. No, but <laughs> some men have issues with the hygiene down there. Women are like, oh my God, high-fiving me. Because a lot of men don't think to freshen up that area. And they use talcum powder, which is not good for you. It's carcinogenic and it's messy. Okay. Another thing I want to tell you is that I've been listening to Stitcher a lot. Oh, thank you. I love Stitcher. Stitcher is an app for your iPhone. And I just have been listening to a lot. So a lot of different podcasts, which is funny because I never listen to podcasts. Uh And I know Madness is recording from the Stitcher studio. And I just been meaning to tell you, it's free app for your iPhone, smartphone, anything. And listen to any podcast, including ours. But I'm like in LA, in traffic every day. And I'm thinking, what the hell? I should listen to Stitcher. And now that's all I do. Change my life. Wow. Look at you getting into things. Well, I've been dying to talk to you. I haven't <laughs> talked to you in like a week. I just have so many things to share. Yeah. So you you were on TV. You went to New York for a while, right? I went to New York for like three days to launch the product. And we did a big party. I was on. Um, no, I wasn't on any press, was I? No. Oh, I was on the Chris Jenner show that aired. But then New York was just meetings. We went to uh, People Magazine, like we dropped off products for everyone. Because the thing is, it's like it doesn't look, it's not, nothing's like, nothing like our products exists out in the planet right now. They're very unique. Crazy. Well. So yeah, New York was fun. What about you? You've been to like 18 festivals, like in the last five minutes. Yeah, I think I already talked about, I was in Chicago, then I was in Monterey this past weekend, which is beautiful. Like Monterey... Yeah, Monterey is about an hour away from Santa Cruz, California, which is a big surf town. And it's just it's a nice, cool place to chill. And the people that put on Coachella decided to throw a music festival there. And I went to that and it was really cool. And then this weekend, going to Philadelphia for the very first time. I, I'll be honest, I never even cared to even look up Philadelphia on a map. And I realized that it was <laughs> – I always thought – you guys, you're going to think I'm the biggest idiot in the world. But, like, if you don't, you know, if you had never planned to go to Philadelphia in your life. Right. Why uh, would you look it up? Why would you? Yeah. Why would you even look where it was at? And for some reason, I thought it was, like, parallel to Chicago. And it was, like, down south somewhere. Like, maybe, like, New Orleans area. And, right, uh, right. I found out. Oh, it's, dude, it's you just, thought it was in the south? It's just right by. Are we really? <laughs> It's Are we for... really having this conversation? <laughs> Jesus. I, honestly, I swear to God, everyone's going to think I'm the biggest I mean, you're idiot, smart. But... You're smart. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but I just never ever looked in going to Philadelphia. And, I mean, there's nothing really in uh, my daily life that brings up Philadelphia until I actually looked the, pa- the a few days ago to see where I actually was going and realized it was right by New York. <laughs> Right, exactly. You can even go into New York for the day. You could take a train. Yeah, and and uh, just to let <laughs> welcome everybody, to this planet. Yeah, and just to let everybody how how dumb I am when it comes to geography. <laughs> that I just found out that Cancun is by the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was by like San Diego. <laughs> you did Cancun. Have you ever been? No, Clearly I've never not. been there. I've never been there. And I never, get out I more. never, I never been to Mexico, so I always thought it was like right by San Diego or something. Because everyone from the San Francisco Bay Area always go to goes to Cancun. Cancun's a big spring break area, so I didn't think it was that far away. And then I found out that right. it was by the Gulf of Mexico. You learn something new right. every well, day. Every day you learn a goddamn thing new. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I learned new today so far. I don't think I've learned anything yet. Oh man! Damn. So what's going I really, on? Wait, wait, I must have. Okay. You were on. What? You were on. Uh, I get to hear you as I'm on the radio in San Francisco on Love Line, which is pretty cool. And then it, it's it's funny because like somebody else is like monitor monitoring the the Love Line show as I'm on the radio. So when I go to commercial break and I'm walking by the studio and it's playing. I hear Emily this, I hear Emily that, and I even hear them talking about you when you're not even on the show, which is crazy. That you really? What did what, they say about me when I wasn't on the show? They're saying something like about like Howard Stern or something. They were gonna like email. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be on Howard Stern. They exactly. Gonna, I'm going I mean, to be on Howard Stern in the next month or so. If you are gonna be on Howard Stern, I swear to God, Emily, we can't be friends if I just can't go with you and wait in the green room you know how much how how many years have i been sending you clips of the howard stern show how many um, years forever on one second. I, first of 
forever. Hold on, I just have to do something technical, technological right now. Hold on, I'm coming back. <laughs> All menace? Right. No, yes. I'm sorry. I unplugged. I unplugged my mic. Okay, Menace. Yes. You have my word. You have my word. I'm making this on air. I, if I'm on the Howard Stern show, you can fly to New York it, and come with me into the lobby, into the green room. In the green room. If I'm allowed to bring somebody to the green room. I will. I would die. I know. Okay. Would I you, know. Would you be nice to me? Would you I not would make fun nice of me you. anymore? I wouldn't make fun of you. I would help you. I know every single person's name on the show even the people that are not even on air the people that work behind the scenes i'll give you the rundown on everything so you'd look and sound i feel amazing. like that's the least i could do for you okay so i'll let you know what happens i mean you know nothing's like 100 percent, but it's like the, i was just there last week i was gonna be on but he's on hiatus all the shows i'm gonna be on bethany yeah. and a bunch of talk shows but they're all on hiatus so you come with me honey i will so um oh but i forgot to tell people you've been listening to menace and i chat and you're like what the fuck <laughs> is sex with emily podcast and you're not talking about sex at all sorry um today's show we are going to be reading your emails that you sent to feedback at sexwithemily.com because we are getting so many amazing emails from our listeners. And you know I have like listener email guilt that I want to answer every single one. And so I'm trying to, and they're all really good topics. We picked out topics that from emails that seem to be common themes of what people have been emailing about a lot. So I think that one of your answers, we're talking about the side effect masturbation. Uh, what do you think, you know, does your partner masturbate too much? Um, we, we want to know about a woman whose husband wants anal butt play and she's not sure that she does. Another couple, great sex life, but guess what? They're no longer into sex. So we've got all these topics. And then another one, we've got more than that, but also squirting. People love to talk about squirting. So I'm going to give you some tips. A woman has a question about squirting and then we're going to answer her tips with how you can make your partner squirt. It is possible. Even though Menace doesn't believe me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Do you? No. Nah, okay, what? what can we talk about some sex scandals? Like what's going on? Yes. In life? Yes, go ahead. All right. Oh so my god. What what do you got for me? No, I I've got a good one, but you go. I wonder if it's the same one. So it's out in the press. It's out in the press. So you know that Chloe Kardashian was getting like she got married to Lamar Odom super quick, right? And then there was like just recently, there was like cheating rumors and all this stuff. Now they're saying that uh, that he's been uh, on crack for two years. Right, I saw that. I That's saw that. Crazy. It, I hope. I is hope, it confirmed? Uh, there. But what's weird about it? It's not confirmed totally. But what's weird about it is like, if it's not true, why don't they just like coming out and saying it's not true? You know, why let people right, exactly. go crazy? Had you it? ever heard, ha has everyone heard like murmurs before that he's been doing crap? No. Like, has that been like a no? No. I Yeah, that's a pretty strong allegation if it's yeah. not true. But I'm sure it's true because why would they be saying it? I love Lamar too. So I hope he, if he does have a problem that he can get over it quickly. I hope so too. I think it's such a set. It's so hard. But I guess, you know, from what I've read, like T yeah. I think I did actually go to TMZ Menace. I'll just have you know. Now, and did, there was something, uh, yeah. What? Did you hear about the Miley Cyrus sexually charged uh, performance at the VMAs? I, not only did I hear about it, Menace, yeah. I saw the Miley Cyrus what? performance. Yes. Look at you. I did. I was at the gym and it happened to be on. And let me tell you, I didn't like, I, I didn't think he was even sexy or hot. Like either do the thing with the, do the hand thing with the foam thing and stick out your tongue, but don't do it all. Like it's distracted. It just wasn't, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was hot or sexy, but I'm not her target audience. What did you think? I think it was awful. Yeah, the, the thing it was is, awful. The thing is she, she's getting all this uh, fake uh, hype. And like, so she's super confident that she's trying to act like super, they call it ratchet, like ghetto. Right. And then so like all these super ghetto rappers are like behind her and supporting her. Of course, like people don't understand, like, why is the, the you know, the hip hop community supporting her s so quickly and not calling her out for being a phony It's because everybody Miley Cyrus is worth one hundred and sixty five million dollars. She's worth more money than your Justin Bieber. She's more she has more money than Kanye. She has more money than any of these rappers out there. So, of course, they they want to be friends with her so they can make a song with her and it will sell and they'll make money. So that's why exactly like, people, people don't understand 
why they're like supporting her being so so ghetto and thank you for breaking down the economics of it man yeah for our it's, audience. it's all about right. money because people be, people common people like I, I don't understand why everyone's supporting her doing this because everyone wants to take advantage of her and take some get some profit off it that's exactly. why that's do you think why she knows people. this i don't think she knows this I Thanks think for she, breaking it down. I think she thinks that uh, she's taking being taken seriously. Right. It's terrible. I think you're right. Yeah, totally. Terrible. Um, and then the other scandal, but this is more of like a a, a, a JV scandal, like a junior varsity, who cares scandal. But yeah. last night, so I do Love Line Radio Show with Dr. Drew and Mike Catherwood every Thursday night, but I've actually did, done it three, three nights this week. I just fill in when Dr. Drew's gone. And so... We were supposed to have Steve Ward. Do you know who that is? He's the matchmaker on VH1. Uh, not really. He's the he has a show called Tough Love on oh, VH1. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he's got like sick back hair, and he's kind of a douchebag. I'm gonna be honest. Mm-hmm. I was on a talk show with him. We were on a panel together. It was the Jeff Probst show, and like usually you're on a panel. There's three of you out. We were like debating, you know, dating and sex and all that stuff. So beforehand, you say, hi, we're about to go on air. You know, we're sitting on our little couch. And he just, like, has this douchey, like, his hair slicked back, barely make eye yeah. contact with me. So then I just, like, fought with him the whole time. I was like, we totally disagreed. Anyway, he's coming into Loveline last night, right? And Dr. Drew's like, oh, good, Emily should be there. And I'm like, I'm going to take him down. We were joking. Yesterday, yeah. we get an email, and he's like, he can't show up for his performance. So for further notice, he will not be available. Come to find out, huge scandal on the Internet that he had sex with a – he's a girlfriend – he had sex with the prostitute. It's on tape. Promised her that she could get a, a position on his show. Could be like on his show, television show as one of the dates or something. And the uh, whole scandal broke loose last night. What? Yeah, see, Dude. I just told you something you didn't know. It's kind of stupid if you don't know him and you don't care, but he's kind of douchey. Why? Yeah, no, it's it's all on the internet right now. I'm looking at it. So, yeah, Tough Love Host. Okay. The show was pretty popular a couple of years ago. And then, I know, but uh, it's good for him. His show's coming back. And I'm sure he's a very nice person. It's just yeah. when I met him, not so nice. But whatever. That could be his persona. I have no idea. I've never seen the show, and I don't plan to. Damn. Damn, man. Damn. Damn. Okay, he would always so have his mom. Pro- on, he would always have the, his mom on the show, too. Damn. Yeah. You're looking. Your mom. I think she's still on it. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah, I think she's still on it. So, um, yeah, well, we can get into some of the emails from the people right now if we want. Oh, wait, also, wait, wait, wait. one yeah. more scandal. What do you think what? about this? What do you think about the whole Simon Cowell thing? Did you know you know about that? So Simon yes, Cowell, that he best, he yes, impregnated tell. his best friend's ex wife. Now right. now he's all up on the beach making out with her in photos. And it's all over. His TMZ. best friend's ex wife. Yeah, well, they were in the middle. They weren't divorced yet. His best friends, uh, they weren't. Yeah, completely divorced. Yeah, the paperwork was still going through, and he got her pregnant. I don't think they're fully. Oh my god! Fully divorced yet? So is that still his best friend? What about Bros Before Hoes? Yeah, he broke he broke the Bros Before Hoes code, man. Oh this man, guy code. that is such a code. But pe- but now he's stepping out with her. Yeah. What, is, what is she? What is she like? Is she like cute, older, younger? What? Yeah, she's older but extremely good looking, and uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he I've seen he it, broke whatever. bro code testament. Freaking, I don't know. But yeah, it was he bad. broke the bro code. I'm not down with it, but it doesn't surprise me. He seems sort of smarmy. And I also remember in the very recent past, he had a huge wedding in Northern California that, like, I know people who went to his wedding. Like, remember, like, probably four or five years ago? Really? He got I married. Remember. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Unless I'm totally wrong. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, I don't think he was. You know married. me with facts. No, I think he did get married. Am I crazy? No. Whatever. I might be, but not because of that. Okay, so um, let's get into some emails. We can What's still talk. Going? I love talking to you, Manis. Okay. Madam Emily, how are you? Hope that you will be fine. I like sex very much. (laughs) Madam, can you please tell me, are there any side effects of masturbation or not? And also, if you can send me sex position, do you have any sexual video of you? Or can you send me a link? I'll be waiting. Oh, my God. Okay. I don't know where he's from, but I would like to help him because I get a lot of emails like this from people who are not from this country probably and they don't have a lot of access to sex information. And so I want to tell them, uh, go to my website. I do blogs about sex positions every week. I just did a blog on sex sitting down, sex standing up, doggy style, and pile driver. So 
Check out my site, sir. He called me madam. <laughs> and he wants a sexual video of me. Oh, you will not find that on the website. There are no naked pictures or sex videos of me. Uh, Hence, we... even though the name is Sex with Emily. We? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, that's what we got for you. Madam cool. Emily, that's funny. Okay, cool. Dear Em, okay, wait. Dear Emily, when I'm in the house or outside, my husband loves to tap or poke my vagina and butt. He loves to play with my breasts. I don't mind the tap on the ass, but the rest annoys me. I talk to him, but he doesn't get it. What can I do? Signed, Aaron. Okay, Aaron, what can you do? Um, he loves to tap or poke my vagina, but he loves to play with my breasts. Okay, here's my question. I need a little, more, a little bit more information. Do you... Never like these areas touch your vagina, your butt, or your breast? Is it just the way he does it? Is it because you find it to be offensive because you're not warmed up yet? Like, I have questions here. I don't really understand it. And you said it annoys you and you've talked to him, but he doesn't get it. You need to talk to him in the right way. So you probably said it in a way that wasn't his language. Hence, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. We have different languages. So, Menace, how do you think a woman can effectively, without insulting you, tell you that she does not like something that she is doing sexually? But it's just in public, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, when I'm house or outside, she said, oh. when I'm in the house or I'm outside, he pokes her vagina on butt. Now, personally, <laughs> I would find that annoying. If I was, like, sitting in the kitchen, like, doing the dishes, not that I ever do, but, or if I was, just, like, getting dressed and he came up and he was poking my butt and, like, annoying me. I was like, I'd be like, I'm getting ready. Like, this is not the time or place. But if it was, like, sexy, and he started out by, like, kissing my neck and getting me turned on, and then he wanted to, like, tap my butt, I'd be, like, into it. But this is what we talk about is that women need foreplay. We need to be warmed up. We need to be ready for sex. We need to be ready for action. So it's probably bothering you because he's just acting out his sexual impulses, and you're like, what are you doing? I just come from work. I'm not even turned on right now, and I'm hungry. Yeah. But... Menace, if a woman, if you were doing something to a woman, which I'm sure has never happened to you, but if you, let's say with your girlfriend, there was something you were doing, she didn't like the way you nibbled on her ear, for example. She loves everything else, but not how you nibble on her ear. How would you like to be told? How, how would I like, just be straight up, just tell me, you know, I, I don't know. I, there's no easy way around it, don't you think? Just, just go for it. Like, hey, look, you've, you've, you've touched it enough. Okay, get over it. <laughs> I think you gotta sandwich it by also saying, "Baby, I love when you kiss my cheeks and my face. I love the way you kiss my neck. Um, sometimes when you start to tap me in in those places, it's uncomfortable. But so sandwich with what you love. Start with all the great things he's doing, and then say, you know what." But I'm not loving it when you're tapping my butt and I'm just coming home from work. Yeah. Or whatever it is. That's you got to do it. Okay. Emily, I'm 22 years old. I've never had a boyfriend. I've had one guy interested in me, but I'm shy and they end up thinking I'm not interested. A lot of the time, it's just like they don't even notice me. So that makes me feel worse. What can I do to be less shy and get guys to notice me? Love, Tanya. Tanya, the first thing I, I read your email and I just thought to myself... Confidence, self-confidence, self-esteem, that you have to make it your life work to cultivate confidence. So I think it's an insecurity. And so she thinks that men aren't interested in her. This is what she's going to keep telling herself. Men don't like me. I'm not attractive because she doesn't feel good about herself. And once you start feeling good about who you are and what you look like and whatever your insecurities are, then you're going to be attracting people who will be attracted to you because you're attracted to yourself. Which is easier said than done. Right, Manus? Yes, of course. And then maybe just maybe change your change your uh, look a little bit. Do something a little bit crazy. Dye your hair. Ask your friend. Yeah, exactly. Super blonde or super red or, you know. Change. Yeah, do something. Do what, what? Do you have any friends that you admire their taste? Be like, hey, babe, I love your haircut. Where do you get it cut? And then go get a crazy haircut. Sure. But also you have to know like what your strengths or what are your weaknesses. Do you have unreal, this is the things that contribute to low self-esteem in a lot of people. You compare yourself to other people. You have really high expectations, which I've gone through being a perfectionist and like thinking that everything has to be right. And you just always feel down on yourself. You know, oh, if I get lose five pounds, if I get all A's and then you never feel good and your confidence is low because you have these unrealistic expectations. So just learn by like loving you who you are and where you're at in your life. 
And maybe get a cool haircut and a nice pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. Some, Just a thought. Okay. Some, what? Some East Saint Laurent's. East Saint Laurent's. That's what I want so bad. I want a pair of you. Okay. If any listeners would like to buy me a pair of YSLs size seven heels, I would be honored. Indebted. Thank you. <laughs> and you could come. You could. You could come on the show actually, and talk yeah. about whatever the hell you want. Just buy me a pair of those shoes. Nice. Okay, dear Emily. I'm. T- um. What? Uh. Okay. I've always been curious about having sex with a girl who will use a strap-on on me. My girlfriend thinks I'm gay for wanting it. Why or what would make me want this? Signed, Jack. You know that I love this question. Yeah. Um, especially because it's the end of Anal Pleasure Month, which is actually sponsored by Good Vibrations. And we love goodvibes.com. Um, it's a, they declared it Anal Pleasure Month. So it's almost over. And I think it's a great time to answer answer an anal sex question. So basically, it's simple, Jack. You have a fantasy about being dominated. And maybe you think that it would feel really good if your ass got penetrated. There's nothing gay about it. Sex is all about different power dynamics. And if you want to feel like you're the submissive while she penetrates you, that's fine. But also, if you just want to know if it feels good, a lot of men, a lot of straight men, say that they experience amazing pleasure from anal play that it's actually the male G-spot in there, in your butt. It's the prostate, and it feels amazing to many men. Not for all men, okay? But it does not mean that you're gay at all. Um, Women give blowjobs. Men give blowjobs. Men like it in the butt. Sometimes women like it in the butt. So um, if you're interested in a strap-on, you can also check out goodvibes.com. They've got everything you need for entry-level penetration with your anus. Use coupon code EMILY for 15% off anything at goodvibrations.com. So, um, like, I'm always talking about how men, I feel like it's kind of a bummer. I always say with sex, try everything once that interests you. Once. Because life's too short. What if anal play is the most amazing thing you've ever felt in your entire life? And I'm not saying you need to go to with a strap on. Maybe you, your, your, your partner sticks his or her finger in your butt and you want to know if it feels good. Or they touch it lightly on the outside. I'm not saying you got to ram in a thing. I'm just saying, see if you like it. Menace, are you going to do that tonight now that I've, in, I've inspired you? Uh, I, I probably wouldn't do it tonight, but I do suggest there is a movie that I've brought up on the show maybe a couple of years ago uh, about this very subject that it is a big part of the movie. It's called Road Trip, and it, it's, a, it's a comedy, and it's hilarious, but it's all about anal stimulation in certain scenes of the movie and it's pretty funny so okay and then you can laugh about it too and they highly recommend it (laughs) right okay so you can also go to my website and and, uh i don't know i don't like whatever you can search anal for example and there'll be lots of helpful and useful articles and things you can read on there too blog posts um and use a lot of lube use my emily and tony lube actually which is amazing i used it for the first time yesterday having Actually, I was not having sex. I used it during my own self-pleasure time. I was a virgin to my own lube. And to, like, I hadn't tried the final final, is what I'm saying, out of the bottle. Wow. Yeah, I loved it. It's amazing because I knew what I wanted in a lube. I wanted the perfect lube, and it's vegan, and it's not animal tested, whatever. You're going to get it all menace, and you'll try it. Okay. okay, dear Emily, two questions. First of all, do you know how a woman can squirt? My fiance loves it when it does happen, but it doesn't happen enough. Any suggestions on what I can do to help it along? Thanks. Signed, C. Okay. Female ejaculation is what we're talking about. Um, There's lots of, you know, debate. People say it doesn't even exist. Men is always jokes that it's really urine coming out of her when it's not. Um, (laughs) It's been scientifically proven that it is. God. It's not. But what? Do you really think that? Uh, They had doctors analyze it and say that it was indeed urine. It's the same chemical construction as prostatic fluid. So it's not, it's different fluid. Like scientists have studied it. It's not, it's just, it's just totally, it's not urine at all. It's like male prostate whatever ejaculate or whatever but it's fluid and that's what it is back to the story back to back to back to squirting turn her on first 
So women have to be like very turned on for them to squirt. So do it however you want to do it, but just make sure if you are her partner that every cell in her body is completely turned on. So it won't work if she's not turned on. The next thing you have to do is find her G-spot because that is where all the magic squirt, all the squirting magic happens. So you got to find her G-spot if she has not ever found it or you guys haven't explored it. It's sort of a fun exercise you could do together. Hey, what are you yeah. doing Sunday? Let's explore your G-spot. Um, feel the front inside wall of her vagina with a lubed finger or two about one finger length up. The G-spot has a different texture from the rest of the vaginal muscles. It may feel rough or raised. So you can kind of feel in the front of the vaginal uh, muscles where, where it is. And you just keep pressing so you focus on the front row of the vagina you explore it with your fingers as they're lubed push on her g-spot see how it feels to her it might feel like she needs to urinate when you push on it so make sure her bladder is is empty before you start it might feel like she needs to urinate but if her bladder is empty she can be sure that it won't happen and what she's feeling is normal which is kind of a bummer for a lot of women including myself you just want to go with it but you're like i'm going to pee all over this guy but you're really not you're really not going to pee so don't try to stop it. Keep going with it. And then you can introduce toys or use your fingers. Um, you try to induce the female ejaculation at this point. So maybe she's had a few clitoral er uh, orgasms. So keep her aroused. Keep firmly stimulating her G-spot with your fingers or a toy. Goodvibes.com has tons of G-spot toys. You can Google like G-spot toys on their site. Um, she'll probably feel the desire to urinate, remember. But once she's at this point, she feels a very intense sexual feeling. She's feeling alive. She keeps going. She might be ready to ejaculate. So she needs to keep her, her muscles open, relaxed, let it flow, deep breaths. And it'll help if she pushes with her PC muscles, which are her pelvic floor muscles. Sometimes like, I do that too. Like when I'm trying to orgasm, sometimes you just push your PC muscles. It helps do your Kegel exercises and strengthen them. And... Um, Am I going on too long? I've got more. I've got one more step. Menace, no, go do for you it. believe me now? Okay. No. So, so once she starts to ejaculate, a clear fluid will squirt. You'll probably see it like squirt or sprinkle out of her urethra. It can be about a lot. Like a lot of times it's a lot. It's, it's a like river. Half, it's like a quarter cup. It's, it's a like river. a river. It's like you need to <laughs> you need to like call like the 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 911 or something because uh like not 911, but who's that fire? Yes, because they might you're flooding. Seriously, like there have been some instances where it's just, it is a lot wetter than anything. And yeah. so put a towel underneath, put a towel underneath, whatever you have to do. You need um, scuba do it in your gear. bathroom. So you need scuba gear. Exactly. Oh my God. It's true. Um, it's also possible with clitoral stimulation. So if you want to skip all the G spot stuff, I recommend using the Hitachi, the magic wand. Actually, it's no longer Hitachi magic wand, it's the original magic wand, which. I can tell you from personal experience and from many of my friends' experiences, the magic wand is the catalog of all vibrators and it can really help you uh, have a G-spot orgasm. I mean, have an orgasm just using your clitoris, but also if your partner's stimulating your G-spot and use the magic wand, you might even be more likely to squirt. Use coupon code EMILY for 15% off because I know you want to buy everything that I talked about <laughs> at goodvibes.com. So, I don't know, Menace, do you ever get into the squirting thing, like with women? Has that ever happened to you? It, it, Some ha women just, it happened, it just, but I thought it was, I was being peed on the whole time. I know, and then you left, right? And then you thought yeah. she was stealing your wallet. Okay. So, but she wasn't peeing on you. Yeah, that's what you say. But does it turn you on now that you think that she wasn't peeing on you, rather she was female ejaculating on you? Uh, that doesn't, like, turn me on, but it's not going to stop me from having sex. I don't get like you know. I know it gets pe some people super horny. Oh my god, I can't believe it when she squirts. Oh, I got the biggest hardest boner on the planet. But it's just <laughs> I I don't, and I don't think every man on the planet feels the same way. And right, you know, you I, traditionally. I think if we, right. I think in this topic, if you did a survey, I think it'd be maybe fifty fifty. On um, people, if they find it uh, hot or not, maybe you can you can put on. A Why don't we start? Let's yeah. listen to our listeners. Feedback at sexwithemily dot com. Do you find female ejaculation hot or not? Great yeah. question, Menace. I mean, 
I think I'm a actually lot of people, putting another survey I think on my lot site. Of pe- I think a lot of people are going to put in the effort of sending in an email is going to think it's hot, but uh, I think if you put it, you're already up, you're if, already trying to defend yourself because you're going to lose. I, well, I think in an email in an email sense, I believe that it, yeah, I probably would lose. But I believe if you actually just put a survey on sexwithemily.com, it would be fifty fifty because people people are kind of lazy these days. I admit it. I I put off days to write a freaking email. So I'm sure whoever's going to write an email is going to be passionate saying that they like it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, put it, put I it don't on know Facebook. That, put it on Facebook. Put it just, I, I'll put it, I don't uh, think I think I'll get kicked off Facebook for talking about female ejaculation. <laughs> I'm serious. Why? I got kicked off once before. My fan page, my sex with Emily page, which you should all motherfuckers go like it now. Sorry. I don't wow. swear, but like if you're listening to my show, the least you could do is go to Facebook and be like, oh, I like her. And I give you interesting tidbits on Facebook that will change your sex life. So why not yeah. do that? Because you know you're on Facebook all day long anyway. Yeah. That's what I got to say about that. Okay, so, awesome. um, wait, what were you just saying? Before? <laughs> and follow me on Twitter, Sex with Emily. And Menace is Menace. All, and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Mm-hmm. He's just Menace. And he's amazing. Just menace, yeah. Um, menace, Instagram. I got a quick question for you. Yeah, go for uh, it. What'd you say? What Instagram do you think about favorite. when you... Instagram is where Menace is king. Yeah. Um, okay, if you... Let's say you don't want to orgasm... When you're in bed with your, when you're having sex and you want to think of something, you know, every guy like has the thing that he thinks about, like his third grade teacher with the mole or whatever. Yeah. What do you think about? To make me not. Uh, not orgasm. Uh, there's nothing that I can think about that would not make me, because you just, no matter how much you try to put it out of your mind, you, you just can't. So you got to change position. You have to break for a second and change position okay got but, it i'm just curious because a lot of I mean, guys think of something yeah i mean i people try that method but i think there's like what <laughs> you try to think about it try not to think about it. oh i'm thinking about it, i'm thinking about it and then it's over you know yeah that's true too but a lot of guys have the power to do that but i was i'm asking because we're actually doing a survey on our site about the length of sex it's not up yet but it will be soon like like do you think less Sex lasts too long, too short. What would you like your partner to do more of? All this stuff. Um, because I want to tell everyone, if you feel like you don't last long enough, we have a whole new blog on this that you can check out and sexwithemily.com. But also a lot of guys want to know, like, how do I last longer? And we they, and there's this new FDA-approved desensitizing spray. I can send you some, Menace, called Promescent. And that's P-R-O-M-E-S-C-N-T, S-C-E-N-T. You can check it on our website. And it's a desensitizing spray that you put on your penis. It does not transfer to her. Her vagina will not get numb. Um, and men don't have orgasms as quickly. So it's really cool. But we want to find out more about facts about like just I just want to know about people's sex life who listen to the show. And so I have some really interesting questions to ask you. So check it out on my website. Um, Menace, I'm going to come to San Francisco, I think, in a few weeks. And um, I'd love to uh, like hang out and do fun stuff. Yeah, with that'd you. be cool. I like doing the shows when we're face to face. It's a lot easier. And uh, I know I miss you so yeah. much, and it's really been great to talk to you today. You too. And I always love you. I know. Anything else I need to know in the world? Uh, do you no, have to... That's it. Download Stitcher. It's totally for free. I'm at the Stitcher Studio. Oh my god, obsessed. Yeah, uh, you can just type in "sex" and "sex to Emily" will pop up. You can check it out on your desktop, your tablet. Uh, your Android, your car. your car. No, I listen to it when I'm driving now on my cell phone. I'm just like Stitcher and then I search for all these different podcasts, which is actually, I just listen to ours because I never have uh-huh. ever in eight years listened to it. But no, we sound good. And then I listen to a few more. But yeah, it's oh. any pod, like the, how many podcasts? They have like 10,000, right? 20,000, a million? Uh, there's about 18,000, I believe right now. Anywhere between 20 and 18. But the... There's another thing too. If you if you want to hear me talk, I I rarely do it. Like maybe once every four months. But there is a there's a thing on there. If you if you search Stitcher presents, I'll like interview random people on there. But it's not. Oh, about, you do? Yeah, but it's not about sex. It's just about. Any, it doesn't have to be about sex. Anything Why don't, about you about dot coms to radio DJs to musicians and stuff like that. But I I don't do it that often. Okay. But you well, will you'll get an alert when it's updated. So just add it to your playlist. That is a draw though. Yeah. To listen to you menace more often. I know. Which we don't get to. 
Um, anyway, well, I hope everyone has a lovely week and enjoying your summer. And I love you, Menace. All right. I love you, too. And we'll have even more shows two days a week, right? Yeah, more shows two days a week, baby. All right. That's what we're doing. Sounds okay, good. Okay, thanks, everyone, for listening to Sex with Emily. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.